Welcome to episode no. No. Here we go again. Welcome to episode 11. Is crowdfunding the funding you need? Hello, good morning and welcome to episode 11. Um, I've been hit with many questions and requests about crowdfunding around this time and it usually happens like around the springtime of every year. And I thought it'd be useful to determine first why and if crowdfunding is the right funding for you. And this goes for both equity crowdfunding and rewards-based crowdfunding um, and, and why you should crowdfund if it makes sense for you um, and some things that you should consider before crowdfunding. So first, I wanted to outline the quick differences between obviously equity-based and rewards-based crowdfunding. Equity-based crowdfunding is when you're crowdfunding for investors um, and with um, the regulation A+, you're able to do that up to a million dollars in California. Um, and for accredited investors, you can do more, of course. So um, equity crowdfunding is really interesting. I don't think it picked up as much as people expected that it would. But if you have a really good core friend and family group, I think equity crowdfunding is really great for friends and family fundraising. So, uh, or if you have already a core group of investors that really just need a place to go to learn more about what you're doing and, and want to get all the materials in one place. If you have a group of interested investors, then I think equity crowdfunding is the right place to go and be. Um, I think the biggest thing you have to know about equity crowdfunding is there are a lot of legal fees involved. Um, they pretty much most, most platforms help you manage all the paperwork. So that's like start engine or fundable. And then also last but not least, um, they don't really provide the traffic. So you're gonna have to get your own traffic to come to the site, whether you're using marketing, which is advertising or public relations, which is earned media, or again, like you already have your own email network list. So please keep that in mind if you're going to be equity crowdfunding, it is not right for everyone and it's not as easy as slapping up a quick crowdfunding page. Um, same goes for rewards-based crowdfunding, which is the kind of the more popular consumer version of crowdfunding that you see today on Kickstarter and Indiegogo, um, even GoFundMe. Uh, GoFundMe is more of donation-based crowdfunding, so that's obviously a little bit different, but rewards-based is when you have something to provide to them. So either a product or an incentive um, that these people are buying into, and that's typical for Kickstarter and Indiegogo. So um, those are kind of the two different main categories of crowdfunding. And um, I wanted to just kind of go over some best practices, what you should consider if you're thinking about doing crowdfunding or what you should know if you're not thinking about it and you want to think about it. So the first question you have to really answer for yourself and that I always ask everybody who comes to me with this question of crowdfunding and strategy, why are you crowdfunding? The fact is that crowdfunding isn't for everyone. Consider the two extremes. If, you're la if, if crowdfunding is your last option, you could probably spend your money and time better through another tactic that will get you more positive results and actual measurable results for your money that you're spending. Um, Cause crowdfunding takes a lot of time and money uh, despite what it might sound like. If you have nothing to lose and you have plenty of money, if you're doing a market test, um, if you're, if you just want to see how it goes, then um, you might be able to do uh, crowdfunding in a way that um, will help promote your marketing or PR for the product or help you launch your product. And typically a lot of people come on to crowdfunding because what they need to do is raise funds so that they get the product in production. And if someone comes and tells me that, then we figure out how to crowdfund because they think that is the right thing. Most, most of them have working units or working prototypes or some type of samples ready to go, but they're just looking for that mass production cost and that's expensive. So um, crowdfunding for that is um, really a smart way to go. And um, it's basically the same thing as doing pre-orders on your campaign. So depending on what, uh, sorry, pre-orders on your website. So depending on what kind of product it is, um, and if you have like a really cool creative angle, 
then I would either do a pre-order campaign, which is basically the same thing as crowdfunding, except crowdfunding you might want to do on Kickstarter or Indiegogo. Um, I will tell you that both platforms will expect you to drive your own traffic there. It's not that you create a campaign and then all of a sudden the traffic from Kickstarter and Indiegogo, all the people see your campaign. You really already have to have some kind of momentum. Each one of them have an algorithm that helps push those campaigns to the top. So if you talk to Kickstarter, if you look at blogs about Indiegogo or any crowdfunding, they'll talk about this algorithm. And the algorithm is that you really have to get traffic to your campaign before you can see that platform itself kick in any of its own audience to really make the momentum of the campaign much greater than it much greater than it is and um, make it successful most successful campaigns on both of these platforms they know they're going to be successful before the day they launch so that's something to really think about also the media has become very wary around crowdfunding projects so if you're doing crowdfunding for the purpose of pr um i actually had a phone call about this the other day i i say that's a bad idea there's other better ways to do pr unless you don't have a product yet. Um, most media, um, especially in the consumer tech space or hardware or even lifestyle spaces, they're gonna wanna see a living, breathing, maybe not breathing, <laughs> a living prototype of what you have to offer. So um, concepts don't really fly as well in the media as they used to when crowdfunding just kind of first came to the market where people had all these great ideas. But what happened was, is that both on, on, on all crowdfunding platforms, there's a lot of campaigns that successfully raised millions of dollars, but did not deliver on the promise. So media does not want to be held responsible for crowdfunding failures. And um, that's one of kind of the key reasons that I think if you're doing it for PR, there are better ways to do PR. Please email me at podcast at the silver telegram dot com. Um, okay. So that's number one. Why are you crowdfunding? Number two, it costs money to make money. Nothing good ever came to anyone for free. Um, and the old adage is true now in crowdfunding more than ever. Um, yes, you're trying to raise funds, probably a larger amount of funds, um, or maybe getting some kind of market validation. But the higher expectation is for the raise, the more you need to consider investing into your campaign. Um, the actual dollar amount may vary, but this is also an investment of time and resources. It pretty much engulfs your entire 30 days, um, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, the idea that your campaign will just go viral because you launched it um, is really, really um, not something that really happens anymore. Um, without monetary support, it's very misleading. These really successful campaigns have ad support, have PR, have marketing, digital marketing, email marketing. They have all these things that they've lined up, they're paying for whether it's time or money. Um, so the campaigns that you see that are reaching hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars are investing in their campaigns in those other ways. Um, and for example, just for an example. So we raised, uh, we did a campaign that got about $700,000, but they invested about $65,000 in campaign development. And the cost of that, it, this is what you have to think about. Campaign creation and management, someone who's gonna actually write the text and content, which also leads back to your website, media relations and press releases, if you're gonna do that, um, social advertising, digital marketing, email marketing, those kind of things, video production, which is typically for a good video, anywhere between three and $10,000, Photography and graphic design, the best campaigns have the best photography. Um, and that, you know, we should know that from Instagram, the better the photography, the better the results, the better the ads you can set. Um, so all these different elements, you really have to consider those costs when creating a crowdfunding campaign. And the marketing for a solid crowdfunding campaigns happens far earlier than the actual campaign launch itself. So that includes pre-marketing, social media outreach, email collection, PR, media presence. Um, typically, once I present this information to people, they start reconsidering, okay, these are the things that we have to start lining up as we prepare for our campaign if we want to still do it. Um, so it is an expensive activity. It costs money to make money. Next, crowdfunding does not sleep. So 
this, when we were doing heavy crowdfunding campaigns between the time period of like 2011 to 2016, I would say, um, it was probably one of the more fun, exciting times, but also very, very stressful. Crowdfunding does not sleep. Um, once you launch your campaign, an average campaign will last about 30 to 45 days. It could last up to 90 days. Um, during this 30 days, you'll go through this like crazy emotional roller coaster. And I don't know how many times I could tell you that a client has come back to me and said, oh, I refresh the page. What's happening? I refresh the page. Well, obviously campaigns don't work like that. Any campaigns, um, whether it's crowdfunding or not, you can't continually refresh your website and expect magic to happen. So, um, the the great thing is the great thing about that is if the more prepared you are the less you're going to worry so preparation for any crowdfunding campaign is absolutely key those are more like tips and best practices but um just things to consider crowdfunding does not sleep so you are going to be stressed out for at least 30 days if not more um and because crowdfunding is so fast paced you really have to be ready to invest that full month trying new ideas, monitoring the campaign, updating the campaign, pivoting if you need to. Um, people who have hired us who are not involved in the campaign, they don't do well. Um, you really can't hire out an agency to help you. Um, well, I mean, you can help, sorry, hire out an agency to help you, but you can't hire out an agency to make a successful campaign for you if you're not involved. Um, that is really important. And engaging your crowdfunding community is really important also um, from an authentic standpoint. So having you um, have some face time with these people, especially now that we have like, you know, Facebook Live, Instagram Live, um, things like that, you really want to have new dimensions to crowdfunding because it is a little stale. People aren't, you know, it's not on the rise. It's kind of stabilized a little bit. So you really have to find some new creative ways to market during the campaign. So and make sure you have that time that the time of the campaign, you should be fully on deck for that. It should be your full time job almost. Um, and make sure you factor in someone in your team that should be ready to engage. If you're not available and ready to engage 24 seven, somebody should be if whether it's an intern or a marketing person. Um, it really does take that time. And if you want to figure out where you have to measure most of your time, the first two to three weeks to the last two to three weeks, which is, I mean, pretty much the whole campaign, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, the first two weeks, the last two weeks, if you have a campaign that's longer than 30 days is really the most critical areas. Um, and, and during that time, just so you know, like you are going to go through lots of ups and downs. One day it'll be great. The next day it will, won't be great. You can't watch a campaign like that. It will drive you crazy, but that's again, um, uh, best practices. So, well, that'll be in another podcast. Um, the other thing you should consider, um, a big number or numbers thing that um, most people don't think about is taxes, fees, and shipping. So when you're figuring out how much you want to raise and pricing your rewards for the campaign, you really need to keep in mind a few things. You will need to pay taxes on the income at some point. Um, there are platform fees for both Kickstarter and Indiegogo. I think it's about four to five to six percent of your raise. Um, and then also think about PayPal fees, if there's any of those, if you're using PayPal or credit card, um, pricing out your shipping based on the weight of your product and location. So shipping is a really important consideration early on, packaging as well. I've seen people overlook shipping costs and not realize how much it will actually cost. Um, for example, Canada and Australia are crazy to ship. Um, and so that, that those costs are really, um, important to consider because um, there's some campaigns that we've done that are North American campaigns and Canada is in North America. So if you're offering it to a certain area, you really have to consider the special dynamics of the shipping and handling in those areas. Um, and then lastly, gauging a delivery date that's reasonable is also important. Um, for some products, people are willing to wait longer if they're more technologically advanced. For other products, people want a shorter window. So really time that and to get everything set up beforehand. Um, you're going to have to really consider those key factors. Um, and it will, it will be a great effect on the engagement that your community has with the campaign that your delivery date. The thing that breaks many successful campaigns is when they don't properly set up the production line in advance and realistically consider those costs and how much it would cost for production. So once you figure out how much your product is going to cost your raw cost for that, um, you should build in a buffer for any 
mistakes, delays, any of those things. And then the other thing is to think about is, you know, what is really your bottom line cost that you can afford? Um, because you are going to have to give a discount to these people. And the typical discount is 20%. So I, I'm starting to listen to myself here and it sounds really negative, but I do want to heed everybody like it. Crowdfunding is an important consideration. So know what you're doing before you get into it is really like kind of the overarching message. Um, I would always err on the upward side when estimating your costs. So, um, you know, buffer in like a dollar just, you know, just to make sure that you're not um, under selling because a lot of people have lost a lot of money. Um, and they're not just the backers and the campaign community, but the people who are campaigning. Um, both sides can see a detrimental effect. Last but not least, very, very, very important. Don't crowdfund if it's your last option. Crowdfunding is not a save all. If anything, you should consider it a market test or an experiment. Um, that's at best, it's a market test or an experiment. And if you have something really cool to offer or you have a crowdfunding campaign idea for the idea of crowdfunding, then that's a really great way to go into the crowdfunding. But if it's your last option, don't do it. You're gonna lose all your money. I'm just gonna tell you that right now. I've heard one too many times that companies think that crowdfunding will save them or needs crowdfunding to save them. If that's a position you're in, forget about it. I think there are better ways to do friends and family rounds because at the end of the day, crowdfunding is a rule of thirds. And this is something that crowdfunding community knows really well. The first third comes from friends and family. The second third comes from advertising and the last third comes from PR and media. So that's where the money comes from. So if, if your friends and family aren't gonna back you, um, then you probably shouldn't go into this, number one. But then also just think, you know, if, if crowdfunding is your last option, maybe friends and family should be your first option. Um, if you're putting everything on the line, I will say this will be the worst most stressful month for you because again it's a 24 7 job and you are you know just banking on this to be successful that's a really bad position to be in and for most most people i um, mean as a pr agency which is why we we only take a limited number of crowdfunding campaigns it's an exhausting experience it's exciting and fun and really cool when it works out but it is very exhausting and tiring because you are always looking at the campaign. I know as a PR agency, we would look at the campaign in the middle of the night or something happens or we want to pivot. We have to make plans to pivot the campaign and the messaging very, very quickly. So you really have to be on your toes. Add that to putting the future of your business on the line and there's unparalleled levels of anxiety. <laughs> so, um, you know, probably in this time, um, it's, it's, you don't want to add any more to your plate than you have to. So just to quickly recap the five big things you need to consider. Number one, figure out why you're crowdfunding. Like, what do you expect to get out of this? Number two, make sure you're ready to spend money and time. Number three, crowdfunding is a 24 activity, 24 seven activity for at least 30 days. So make sure you have a point person. Four, Make sure to factor in taxes, fees, shipping, and other costs into your plan. Build a buffer. And last but not least, number five, do not crowdfund if it's your last option or will make or break your product or your company or your life. <laughs> not a good idea. So if you decide to move forward, there are a lot of benefits to crowdfunding. Um, there is a check crowdfunding checklist that we have um, on our website. So you can uh, take a look. Um, and download the crowdfunding checklist in the show notes. So you can have a checklist ready. So as you're going through the process of thinking about it, you could say, yes, I have this, I have this, I have this. There are a lot of benefits to crowdfunding. It does build a, an enormous amount of buzz. Um, you can get exponential revenue growth in a short amount of time. You're validating your product um, early and getting customer feedback and you're building a community. Um, so there are some big bonuses to it, but you just really have to be ready and cautious and in investing in this. Um, and I think it's just important for people to know. And it, I feel like that more people look at the positives of crowdfunding than the things that they should consider just to make sure that they're cautious and careful. It is not an idea that you should go into without planning. 
So if you have more questions about crowdfunding or you still can't quite figure it out, if it's right for you, uh, I'm not a totally against crowdfunding. There are some campaigns that I think will do amazing on crowdfunding versus some other kind of pre-order campaign. So it just really depends on the dynamics of your product and business. Um, but we have a link in the show notes also um, to schedule a free 30 minute consult with me. So I'm more than happy to answer any of your unanswered burning crowdfunding questions there. And if you have any questions or comments or suggestions about the show, please email me at podcast at the silver telegram.com. We do want to take um, suggestions for new show ideas. So please submit them there. And um, it's raining outside. So I wanted to say and end this by saying get outside, but maybe you should get outside and jump in some puddles. So um, for today, that's all for now. Get outside, jump in some puddles, stay mindful, and see you next time.